The market slides down on Friday and continues in the Sunday overnights. Does this mean the rally's over? This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so on Friday morning, the market pulled back and broke a key support level. And while it technically didn't invalidate the count, it did break a support level that you would expect to hold if we were going to see a move higher. After that, the bulls did try to rally, and I said we'd give them the benefit of the doubt until they broke. And they did break, and we entered a short position and made about 90% gains on that play. Now the question is, do we need another low before heading higher? I'll get into all that in just one second, but first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. Okay, guys, as I tell you every week, the thing that keeps me grinding and doing this and putting out these videos and helping people are the success stories I see in my group. You can see them on the screen right now. It's so amazing to see traders come in and learn how to understand what the market's going to do and then beat the market. So if you want to know how to do that, I'll tell you about it at the end of the video. For now, let's jump into the charts and take a look. Okay, guys, here we are on the one hour futures chart of the S&P 500. As you can see, we got the big sell off Friday morning. Okay, and then they found a bottom, a temporary bottom here and r rallied it back up. But this move down broke support. And so when that happened, I kind of was very skeptical about this rally. And when they broke down again here, we had uh, our short position open and did very well on the sell off. Now, with the continued selling here on Sunday night, okay, I do expect them to make another low to build off of to complete wave five down. If you remember over here, I said we likely needed another low and they gave us an exact double bottom, which are a little bit tricky in Elliott wave. So I do expect them to come down here and break this low, make another low down in the 4430 to 4400 range, and then start the wave cycle back up for wave one of five higher. So remember, guys, we're trying to complete this red circle four right here down. Okay, and when we do that, we'll be starting red circle five up from there, and that would be wave one of red circle five up. So again, guys, it's, it's pretty cut and dry right now. We're looking for a move down that breaks these lows. Okay, and when we do, we're looking for this 4430 to 4400 region for that to bottom. Then we would look for a bounce to start wave five up. Now, our line in the sand is 4369. I don't think we'll get down there and test that, but if we do, it becomes very important because if that breaks... Okay, it's the equivalent of this breaking the support up here on Friday morning when we saw that support break. That's the same level as this 4369. If this breaks, all right, then I become skeptical about the move up. And then we have to look at the real possibility that we're going to go down and make another low around 4000. So as they pull back here, I expect the 4400 plus area to hold. If it does break that, then all eyes are on 4369 as that is our line in the sand. I am seeing bottoming signs on the four hour chart, which is a very good sign that this is going to hold in that region. And then we should see a pretty explosive move up out here to start wave one of five up. Okay, so pretty cut and dry on the S&P 500. We're looking for them to break this double bottom here, make a low and then start wave five higher. However, if they continue lower and they break this 4369, then it becomes more likely we're headed down to 4000 to make another low in that area. Okay, over on the NASDAQ, we have a different setup because we are actually counting wave one as in on the NASDAQ for a couple reasons. Number one, the height that it pushed to, it pushed to the 2.0 extension, which is a very common uh, wave target to complete an entire cycle of a wave. So the 2.0 extension is where you would expect wave one to end, and that's where we're at. And then also the depth of this pullback, okay, makes it much look much more like a wave one high and a wave two pullback. Now, if this is going to be a wave two, it needs to hold between 14,106 and 13,832. Technically, it could come down as low as the bottom here um, within a point of the bottom and still be valid, but uh, that would invalidate the move up on the ES. So I, I don't think we're going to break the 13,832 and still continue this move higher personally. Not that it's not possible. It just seems that if we get down to that level and break it, then the ES is likely going to break its support level as well, and we'll be heading down lower at that point. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, as you should break down each chart on, his own, on its own and not make assumptions based on other charts. So while I feel that way, we'll see how it actually looks when we get there. So again, guys, just to recap how we're counting this on the NASDAQ is this is the wave one high and we are pulling back in wave two, targeting between 14,106 and 13,832. If it goes lower than that, we'll see how the ES is playing out at that time and see if we're still in a valid setup for higher. Um, and if not, then it's going to be likely we go back and test the lows. We are seeing bottoming signals on the one hour and four hour on the NASDAQ, which is a very good sign that we're going to hold these levels. So I do have confidence that we will hold and then start our leg higher in wave three. And 
that would be the primary count. So again, looking for that pullback to 14106 to 13832 and then a move higher to start wave three. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link. It will take you right over to our website and check out the membership plans area. I have two amazing plans and they both come with a seven-day free trial because I want you to get in there, try it out, and make sure you love it before you ever spend a penny. It's an incredible trading team in there. We all work together and myself and PT really work hard for our traders. So the first room is the Invest with Jacob room. It is my room. You get all of my real-time market updates. You get all of my buy and sell alerts as well as all of your Elliott Wave questions answered. We trade the SPY and the QQQ in there, okay? And we swing trade, which means our trades last anywhere from a few days to a few months. So we don't trade quite as often as a day trading room might. However, if you're looking for day trading as well as individual stocks and a guy who absolutely crushes the market, you need to check out PT's throne room. Okay, over there, you get everything you would get in the Invest with Jacob room, as well as you get day trading, you get individual stocks, and you get access to PT's well, re reduced risk binary trading method that is so powerful, you really need to see it to believe it, which is why you get that seven day free trial. And his mind and his ability to trade the market is unmatched in my opinion. He is one of the best traders I've ever seen and he is absolutely crushing it over there. So we would love to have you guys in there. So come on over and let's make some money together. All right, guys, key takeaways for today on the S&P 500, we're looking at the futures chart here. Remember that as there is a difference in price, okay? We're looking for a new low down here in this 40, uh, 4430 to 4400 range. Then we're looking for a bounce up out of there to start wave one of five higher. However, if they break 4,400, all eyes are on 4,369 as the must hold level below that. And it's likely we test 4,000 again. Over on the NASDAQ, we have a slightly different setup as we have wave one in as we're counting it right now. And we're looking at a wave two pullback and that pullback should hold 14,106 to 13,832. If it breaks 13,832, we'll have to assess where the overall market is at that time and see if it's likely that we can still go higher or if we're starting to look lower to make new lows at that time. All right, guys, that is the market update for today. I will talk to you tomorrow.